Another key property of waves is called phase, and here we're going to look at how we can uh, measure the phase of a wave and the phase difference between uh, two waves. Uh, so here we've got a sketch of a wave, and we can see we've got the typical sinusoidal wave coming up and down, up and down. Uh, these axes can be whatever you want uh, for the purposes of this explanation. Um, so displacement against time or displacement against position. Um, and we can see that the wave is formed up of this repeating cycle. So if we were to start here, by the time we get to here, we've completed one cycle. By the time we get to here, we've completed another cycle, and here another. So as we come along, we're going through this cyclical repeating motion. And uh, the phase of a wave is a way to describe where along here we are looking. So where in the cycle we are looking at on a particular wave. So we've said before we might measure the displacement um, at a particular time or a particular position, um, but we could also say what's the displacement at a particular phase. And the way we do this is we start off by drawing an analogy with a circle. So in a circle, if we were to imagine going round and round in a circle, then as we do so, we're going in a repeating motion. Just as we go through the cycle, we go through a repeating motion. So we, this point up here might correspond to the start of the motion. As we come around here, when we get to the uh, halfway around the circle, that would be this point and then back around to the start of the next cycle is when we finish coming around the circle and we're back up here. And so we measure the phase in a wave um, as an angle. So we can say, we could see that if this was the centre, this might be zero degrees out here. So up here would be 90 degrees, down here would be 180, 270 and 360 when we get back to the start. Um, but th rather than measuring it in degrees from 0 to 60, the preferred method of measuring angle is in radians. So we start from 0 radians and we go up to 2 pi radians. Uh, so this would be pi by 2 radians. Halfway along would be pi radians. 3 quarters is 3 pi by 2 radians. So we can label the phase on this using this. So this would be 2 pi phase. This would be the 3 pi by 2. This is the pi radians. And here we've got the pi by 2 radians with the 0, of course, here. Um, so we don't have to take the 0 at this point in the wave. If we wanted, we could have taken this peak as the start of the wave. This would be 0 pi by 2 pi, 3 pi by 2 and 2 pi up here. So we pick our own um, arbitrary start of the wave and then we use this phase as a way to describe where in the wave we are. So uh, somewhere along here we might be a quarter of a pi phase. So we can use the phase to describe where we are in a wave. So at what point we are in a wave. Um, but it becomes more useful once we've got two waves which we can pass. So here we've still got the uh, blue wave, but I've added on a second red wave. And if this was the displacement against uh, time, then this second red wave has exactly the same amplitude. It's got exactly the same period, same uh, frequency. If this was displacement against position, it would have exactly the same wavelength. But clearly, these two waves are not exactly the same. They've, they're kind of offset from each other. And so this phase is how we can describe the difference. We would describe a phase difference between these two waves. So we would say, if we are at some point in this wave, where are we at in, uh, what point in the phase are we in the other wave? So if we go from here to here, we would label this, uh, let's switch to the blue, to be nice and consistent. Uh, so this might be our naught. This would be our pi by 2. Here's our pi phase. Here's the 2 pi and the 3 pi by 2 down here. Now, 
we can do the same thing on the red wave. We can label up equivalent points on the red wave. So the equivalent zero point on the red wave would be here. We'd have the pi by 2 here. Here's pi. Here's 3 pi by 2. And here's the 2 pi, back to the start of the next cycle. And so we can see where the blue wave is at zero phase, the red wave is at pi by 2 phase, where the uh, blue wave is at pi, the red wave is at 3 pi by 2. And so we can describe this offsetting between these two waves as a phase difference. What's the difference in phase at any given point? And so we can see that throughout this, we've got a difference of pi by 2 in the phase. Uh, so at any point, the red wave um, is to the left of the blue wave by pi by 2. Uh, so if these waves were traveling to the left, then the red wave would be said to be leading the blue wave by pi by 2. If these waves were traveling to the right, then the red wave would be said to be trailing the blue wave by pi by 2 radians of phase. Um, so that's essentially the concept. It's just a way of labeling where we are in the cycle, which then allows us to compare two waves which are almost identical but just slightly offset. We could, if we wanted, uh, on this time axis, describe this as a time offset. So this might be uh, the red wave leads by um, one second, or if this was a position axis, then we could say the red wave leads or trails by one meter. Um, but it turns out in the long run that using this phase difference to measure it um, becomes a bit more useful, a bit more insightful. Um, and we'll cover that when we get on to the likes of superposition.